Hey, so I recently interviewed for AWS and for me, it was so helpful to read all the experiences that people had before me on the internet, on the lead code discussion board, or even here on YouTube, um, that I just wanted to give back. I just wanted to tell a bit about my experience interviewing for AWS. In the end, I was lucky enough to receive an offer. I didn't take it, but I made it to an offer and I thought I'd share some things that I thought helped me, uh, things I would recommend for someone going through the um, exact same process. Um, my process, so just the way it is structured, I think it is internationally very standardized. Um, so a recruiter reached out to me after I uh, applied uh, and invited me to um, an online assessment. Um, that's a link, you can take it in, uh, using an online platform. Um, then once I submitted that, uh, I had a phone screen preparation session with my recruiter. After that, I had a phone screen with an AWS engineer that lasted, so that took about like an hour, the entire phone screen. Um, then I had an on-screen preparation session with my recruiter. Um, and then I had the on-screen interviews, which were five times one hour. Um, and I did the the on screen uh, the on site interviews remote uh, via Amazon Chime, which is like a custom video uh, software that they use in house. Um, this process itself it sounds kind of condensed, but in total, until I got the offer and uh, scheduled the entire interviews, it took about three months. So definitely on the longer side of 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 interviewing duration. And I think from, from what I hear from a lot of people on the internet, um, a lot of people just forget to mention these preparation sessions with your recruiter. And in my case, they were especially important. So I wouldn't necessarily omit them from the process because um, there you can get a lot of the information for the interviews. You will be able to narrow down the context. Um, and I would really also focus on yeah, getting the most out of the relationship with your recruiter. I made a list um, out of some advice I would give to someone interviewing for uh, Amazon or AWS uh, now um, just to increase your chances. And uh, I'll just walk you guys through the list of advice. Uh, so my first advice uh, would be practice coding. This should really be no surprise. Um, there'll be no way you score an offer if you don't do decently in the coding part um, of the interview. Um, I personally didn't study hundreds of lead, lead code style questions, even though it was my first fan company I ever interviewed for. Um, I, funnily enough, I, first time ever interviewing for a fan company, but I only ever solved about 60 lead code questions. Um, I know the limitations of my own brain. I'm certainly not a genius or something. Um, I know I cannot remember hundreds of different questions. So I really narrowed it down. I focused on 60. I made a table. I listed down more of the mechanisms of solving problems and made sure I'm fluid and very sharp in these 60 questions. But even out of the 60, I don't think I was, I was super sharp. And I, I focused on the core, the core data structures, the core uh, algorithms uh, that could be expected in the interviews and really made sure I... I knew them rather than hundreds of different problems. So um, I would definitely also recommend that you do the same. Do not get caught up in people solving hundreds of lead code questions. Make sure you understand the mechanisms. Study for depth and not necessarily breadth. Um, and this also leads right into my, my second piece of advice. And I think um, I try to structure this advice list in, in relevance of importance. And I think the single biggest mistake that I see online um, that people do when they interview for these big fan companies is um, optimizing, over-optimizing for coding. So even when you read the information material on the interviews, uh, Amazon will tell you that they grade the interviews about 50 to 75% on coding. And then at the end of the interviews, there's usually also quite a large chunk where it's like 25 to 50 percent um, of behavioral questions in every interview. And this should really hint to you how important the behavioral aspect of the interviews uh, is. And I asked myself before the interviews, if this is such a big chunk of the assessment that is made uh, in the interviews, 
how can I justify spending 98% of my preparation time on coding and not on the behavioral part, not on the leadership principles, uh, not on answering the questions in the right way, which is the star format that Amazon really expects. And this is what I see yeah, a lot of people online doing. They, they over-optimize over for coding, solving hundreds of lead code questions, and then brush over the behavioral parts. Um, whereas the coding part is quite hard to predict um, and the behavioral part is far easier to predict and also far easier to learn. So we'll have a far better like ratio out of, of time you spend learning for the behavioral stuff um, versus the output you generate, how the, the, the mark you can, can generate um, with that limited time you spend uh, preparing for it. So I'd say definitely code make sure you're sharp in coding because there will be no way you're going to pass these interviews if you mess up the coding part very badly but do not over optimize for coding um, i'd also say and this is something that a lot of people just just brush over is that you uh, should build a relationship with your recruiter and that was specifically important in my case um, you, the recruiter is your friend they have done a fantastic job if they find a candidate that gets hired in the end. So the recruiter wants you to get hired. The recruiter is on your side in this entire process. So you should really make sure that the recruiter has a positive impression of you. This means um, that you should actually spend time on emails, making sure there are no grammar or spelling mistakes in your emails. Uh, this should include that making sure that your emails are pleasant uh, to read and that they are polite, that you don't forget to thank your recruiter for all the work they put in to advance your process. Um, and this should also include, yeah, just, just building up this, this communication line, this pipeline, um, where there's trust and the communication is good and they really feel like they're interacting with a professional. Uh, another piece of advice I would give is do not show up unprepared. Um, in my case, um, I applied to AWS quite early in my um, recruiting, sort of in the, in the process where I was looking for a job. Um, and I wasn't quite at the point where I felt sharp or necessarily prepared for one of those big FANG style interviews. And when I received the invitation for the online assessment, I asked the recruiter uh, how long was the expected, um, how, how long I would get to basically complete the online assessment. And she said uh, that about six or seven days was sort of the recommended uh, time frame until when I should have completed the online assessment. Um, and I, I, I tried, I tried to get prepared in that in that time frame, but there was just no way. There was just no way I would be I would be ready by then. Uh, so I reached out back to her and explained her the situation. I told her, hey, I want to be at my sharpest, at my best, but the time I have to prepare is simply not enough that I can be comfortable or confident that I will pass this interview. And I feel like this is, this is the mature thing to do if you're not, if the time is simply not enough and you don't feel like you could uh, give your best performance. And you should always remember, like failing these interviews just wastes everyone's time. That means they have to interview another candidate. That means engineers, instead of coding, they will spend time on an interview that doesn't materialize into a hire. So you failing an interview has no advantage for anyone. So I asked her if it's possible to push the online assessment, uh, which she agreed to. So I pushed it by two and a half weeks and then I just took it um, and I was able to pass. But it was because I really focused on not showing up unprepared. And I think you should not too. No interview, whether it be the phone screen, the on-site, uh, the online assessment, never go into any of these interviews if you don't feel like you've prepared properly. Push the interviews, uh, do whatever you want to do, but don't show up if you're not prepared. It is not to anyone's, no one will thank you, no one will be like, oh, thank God you took this interview prematurely before you were fully prepared we fully trust you that with another week you could have absolutely nailed it no like at the time when you have the interview uh, you should be sharp you should be prepared if you're not push it uh, another piece of advice um, 
I would say the interviews are not surprising. And this is also something I see people do online all the time. Uh, interviewing for a fan company is always mysticized. It is made into this ominous thing that is made for you to fail, which I don't think it is. Um, focus, like these questions are hard, but they're in a sense obvious. You can ask your recruiter if there's any way you can um, sort of further learn more about the required algorithms or data structures that can be asked. Um, but don't expect to get like a crazy outlier problem. These problems are more predictable. They're more out of the standard set of problems. There might be variation of those, but they won't ask you for any crazy, super un unexpected um, algorithm or data structure that you've never heard of. Like if you learn the standard, the, the expected, uh, you should be fine. And if something is not obvious, I'm sure the interviewer will know and they will guide you additionally, but don't, don't go in there thinking um, these interviews are made to fail. Focus on the obvious and spend very little time on these outlier questions, on these super unobvious, rare questions. Um, if you do, make sure that you only spend time on those once you really nailed the fundamentals. Um, so yeah, the interviews are not surprising. Focus on the obvious. Don't spend too much time on the outliers. Um, Another piece of advice I have is um, the online assessment is not a trail run. At least in my case, the online assessment was as hard as the on-site interviews or as the phone screen. The online assessment is not a trial run, so you should be as prepared for the online assessment as you are for the on-site interviews or the phone screen. Don't think the online assessment will contain of questions that are significantly easier or that you don't have to be as prepared for the online assessment as you have to do for the other interviews. The online assessment is a real interview. Uh, definitely prepare accordingly. Uh, another thing I would say is that you shouldn't stress about the bar raiser interview. So the bar raiser interview is an interview as part of the on-site interview that is supposed to be specifically hard and made you feel made, made to make you feel a bit miserable um, and is really yeah made to ensure that you're adhering or that the hiring team ensures to the high standard that amazon has for hiring new candidates but you as an interviewee won't know which which interview is the bar raiser interview so online you will find a lot of tips about passing the bar raiser interview or doing this and that in the bar race interview but my advice would definitely be not to stress over it you don't know which one's uh, the bar racer interview anyway and thinking about it will just add additional stress to your interview process don't sweat it it's not something you have in any sense of you, that you that you have any sense of control over um, don't sweat it um, just approach any interview um, as a serious interview prepare for it accordingly but don't even waste a minute uh, about thinking which one's the, the bar raiser interview and how to how to treat it in a special way or something just just yeah don't think about it it, it really is completely outside of your control um, Another piece of advice I would have is that um, you're definitely not out until you're out. In my process, I had several interviews, not just one, where I felt that I could have done better, where I didn't um, solve a problem perfectly. Or in the phone screen, I even went down a completely wrong path. I chose an iterative solution where a recursive solution would have been um, far easier and I didn't reach any sort of satisfactory result with the iterative solution. Um, and by the end of the interview, um, I said to my interviewer, damn, like I went down the wrong path. Like I spent a lot of time exploring the iterative solution here when I now see that a recursive solution would have been far easier um, in this specific situation. Um, and I explained it and I had about five minutes left uh, and I wasn't able to implement any of it. And I was a hundred percent sure, um, that they would kick me out, but at the end they didn't. Um, and that would be also my advice to you. 
uh, don't give up on an interview just because you made a mistake. If you realize that you made a mistake or that you're at an impasse, uh, continue to collaborate with your interviewer, display them how you, how you, how you behave when the stress is high, when you maybe made a mistake, when you didn't solve a problem perfectly, keep collaborating and um, yeah, don't give up on the interview. You're really not out until you're out. Stay positive. Don't carry any of this negativity into the interview and really ask. And if you made a mistake, be open about it. Um, explain it. Um, take the time you have an interview into account, uh, but don't give up on it. Um, another thing I have on my list of advice is that you should definitely collect low hanging fruits in the, in the interview process. Uh, what I mean by that is that a lot of the interview is very unpredictable. So it's not in your control how hard the data structures and algorithms questions will be. Um, a lot of other things are also not in your control. But in particular, the system design interview, as well as the behavioral interview, they're quite easily predictable. There are only a very limited set of leadership principles. And you can absolutely prepare stories that relate to these principles, find great examples. Um, and it's, it's far easier to nail, to really get outstanding grades in these interviews. It is far easier than to score extremely high in the coding related interviews. So you should definitely not brush over the preparation for these interviews, thinking that they're easy, but you should really make sure that you score fantastic grades in the interviews that um, are easier, that are easier and more predictable um, than the coding data structures and algorithms interviews that are um, probably objectively harder because they're just harder to predict. Um, yeah, so collect those low hanging fruits, don't brush over them. Um, prepare for them, make sure you ace them. And my last piece of advice would be that these interviews are incredibly stressful. There were more than one night where I um, lost sleep over the interview, over my performance in these interviews. Um, and it's not worth it. I mean, it's, it's an important thing in your life, but your sanity and your health should always be a priority in this entire process and you shouldn't sacrifice your health um, or your sanity uh, for a job uh, so don't be pulled in into this vortex of people online um, really obsessing over fang interviews make sure you prepare make sure to take it seriously but don't don't put it over your health and your sanity um, that was my list of advice um, as i told you before like i was lucky enough to to finish the process but I would also say that the, the offer you would you receive at the end of the process may not even be as good as you expect. Uh, definitely be sure to negotiate. But um, it's super, it's, it's a lot of people uh, turn down Amazon. Um, and I was definitely not the only one. Um, so make sure you have realistic expectations when it comes to uh, offers from Fang, especially Amazon. Um, but yeah, that was my, my list of advice. I hope it was uh, valuable to you. Uh, I hope I didn't waste your time here. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if this video helped you in any way, um, leave a like. And if you want to share the result of your interview process, um, also make sure to leave a comment. Uh, see you next time.